We're here now with Alec Gettle. He's chair of the board of directors for Sungevity, an online solar services provider that's been growing very fast in recent years. And we're talking about the company's online platform and where it's expanding across the U.S. Alec, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, I wanted to start off with a concept that you guys have been talking about more and more recently, and that is solar as a social network, mm. creating really good uh, consumer relationships around the purchasing and installing of installing solar, and also the business relationships, and and in working those network relationships to right. encourage others to, to go solar. Right. How are you utilizing that concept and how is that part of your business strategy? Yeah, well, that's great. Um, well, our, our mission is to make it easy uh, and affordable for people. And so a lot of the energy that we've spent at Sungevity has been on moving a lot of the solar process online. And you've heard other parts of that sort of story as we've evolved. The next phase of that for us is solar as a social network. Um, you know, you know that we recently uh, hired a guy named Patrick Crane as our new CMO. So he was the CMO of LinkedIn and a uh, really talented guy we're excited to add to the team. Um, and, and there are a couple angles to the social network side of this. One is that we've just found that solar is a very social experience. People just get really excited about it and they love to tell their friends and they want to show them the, the meter spinning backwards and these are my panels. And so it's just a naturally viral experience. And we want to leverage that through social networks because it just lends itself to that. But the other side of it is that, you know, the biggest challenge that we face at Sungevity, and I think everybody in this building faces, uh, is, is awareness and confidence among customers. For 25 or 30 years, people have been hearing, you know, solar is this kind of neat thing, but it's expensive or it's a hassle. And, and frankly, that was true for a long time, but it's changed so fast in the last few years. And, and people really don't know about it. And we face a hurdle in terms of people understanding how affordable and easy it is now. Social networking is the best way to get that social proof to people. Mm -hmm. They hear from their friends, hey, I did this, this works, this is a picture of it. We want to leverage that sort of power and that momentum and, and build on things that way. And so early on, you guys made a transition from doing an on, online uh, iQuote platform, which you still have, to mm -hmm. also offering solar services, like a solar lease product, and working with financial institutions to offer that uh, upfront lease to, to customers at point of service financing. Right. Why that switch, and where do you see that space generally going? Yeah, well, so, you know, the mission is easy and affordable, right? Solar savings made easy. And so the, the, the first step in that was this remote solar design technology that you're referring to. So we figured out how to engineer these systems using satellites and aerial imagery. So that instead of having to have someone come to your house, if you have five minutes and an internet connection, you can get a full quote. You know, everything you need to know to go solar, how much it'll cost, what it'll look like. So we moved a lot of that process online. But that, that solved some of half of the problem, the easy part. You've also got the affordable part. So we spent a lot of time trying to drive cost out of the rest of the process. And with a couple of other companies in the industry, we've figured out a way for people to pay as they go instead of having to pay for the whole thing up front. You know, people were having to pay for 25 or 30 years of electricity up front, and that was a big obstacle. So now with this pay as you go, um, you know, our typical customer, uh, they pay no money down, and they save about 15% on their overall electricity bill which is a really powerful, you know, proposition. And, you know, we didn't want to just address what we thought was sort of half the problem. We wanted to try to address it all. And so that's why we've kind of gone all the way down the value chain. So you see two different approaches in this space. One is to have your own vertically integrated uh, financing, installation, distribution business. And one is to work with partner installers like you guys are doing. You guys provide the, the quoting and the financing package, but work with outside installers. Um, what's the difference in philosophy between those two business models and mm -hmm. why do you guys approach it the way you do? Yep. So, yeah, so we work with local craftsmen, regional companies uh, who are high quality, ambitious partners and we give them the tools to grow. And for us, we felt like there's a lot of really skilled people out there with great businesses that are ready to grow who have local expertise and we can leverage some of that and at the same time offer them, you know, lots of business. Um, and, and tools and training and stuff to help them make their businesses better. And for us, you know, that just seemed like a natural solution. We have a lot of expertise in other parts of the value chain. And in that one, we really just set up a system that makes, that ensures sort of quality delivery. Um, installation is a very local game. It is a local game. So having those inst local installation partners makes it probably a little bit easier for you to get clarity on the different zoning regulations and incentive programs in there's the states. A, exactly. There's a lot of learning that goes in both directions, and that's been really helpful. And I think you know we've been a great partner for them, and it's it's worked out well for us. It's also just from you know stepping back, 
it's a very capital efficient way to approach the business. And so, you know, we haven't had to raise the kinds of, you know, really large amounts of money that, uh, that you would have to do if you wanted to go out and, you know, buy different installers in different places and that sort of thing. And that's enabled us to be really nimble in what is a very fast changing, you know, market landscape. So you started off in California, and now you're starting to move over to the East Coast. Yep. You see a lot of the service providers really starting to hammer away at the East Coast. Com states like New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Maryland and uh, New York's developing a good solar program. That's and so right. you have these mid-Atlantic and northeastern states that are definitely starting to take off. Um, where are you putting your services, and you know where is this going to compare to California? These these different leading states. Yeah, that's right. So we started in California, and we expanded last year to Arizona and Colorado, and we're going to be making an announcement, you know, in about a month's time or a little bit more about five new East Coast states that we're entering into, and the impetus there is, you know, we want to provide solar to everybody. It's it's just a really exciting time in the industry, and it's start it's it's now not just affordable, but almost irresistible in some of these East Coast states with, with the cost that's been driven out of the process and, and out of the technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to be a part of that growth. And you heard, you know, uh, Ron Resch from CSA yesterday that the East Coast is now the biggest solar market in the U.S. It's bigger than California. And that's, I mean, that's just, you know, it's exciting for the East Coast, but it's just exciting for the development of the industry in general. That, you know, what was early on considered a real California game is really a national game more and more. Mm -hmm. So what makes you most nervous about doing that expansion? The, the U.S. market is so scattered, and as I said earlier, it's such a local game, and you have all these new budgetary concerns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, states and, and local governments are, are uh, making serious budget cuts, which could impact clean energy programs. Um, incentive programs are being rolled back or being considered to be rolled back. Does that all make you nervous as you consider this sort of nationwide expansion? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> How nervous? Do you think we'll get through this? I mean, what, what we does will that get do through. Absolutely, we'll get through it. It's it's it's. There's a lot of volatility. It's a very fast growing industry, and you know, and it's there's a lot of change. And if you're going to succeed in this industry, you have to find a business model and a and a orientation that enables you to be nimble because that change is not going away. I mean, and we're all pushing hard to establish some stability in the systems that, you know, in the government policies that, uh, that surround our industry. But the reality is in the short term, it's going to continue to be volatile. And we have to have, you know, we have to be nimble and we have to just accept that as part of life. And we got to continue to be aggressive. But with all those ups and downs that you've seen at the state level, the utility level, those have been going on for years. And nonetheless, you're seeing huge growth mm. in the industry. So. Well, Alec Gettle, uh, we'll watch Sungevity grow. We know a lot of the other service providers will grow as well. It'll be interesting yeah. to see how the competition plays out. And uh, we appreciate you stopping by and talking a little bit about the, uh, the market. All right. Thanks for the time. You bet.